Protoss versus Protoss in its very basis has always been one of the most complicated matchups in professional StarCraft 2. For a while, people even used to call it a rock, paper, scissors. And while I don't think that's necessarily the case anymore these days, there's no denying that it is a very quick and difficult matchup to play. I mean, in its very basis, right? Robotics facility-based openers will counter Blink Stalker. Blink Stalker will end up countering Stargate-based openers, and Stargate-based openers are gonna be great against robotics-based openers once again. So it's a pretty interesting dynamic between the three main tech paths of the Protoss. And while these days, double gateway into Stargate is most definitely the gold standard, there's no denying that there is a lot of room for cheese as well. Now, before I blabber onwards, let's go ahead and introduce the two players in this best of three series of super high level Protoss versus Protoss. Spawning here in game number one on Catalyst Alley and playing with the red Protoss probes in the top left hand corner of the map we're currently looking in the main base of stats and his opponent spawning in the opposite corner he's playing with the blue protos probes and he's once again become very very strong as of late in starcraft 2 we have none other than zest i actually just quickly looked it up because i was very curious Zest is the current rank 3 Protoss, statistically speaking, in the world. And guess what? Stats, indeed, is going to be currently the rank 4 on the planet. Now, obviously, there are many great Protoss players out there. And at the top of the line, like, for example, these two guys right here, uh, they, they switch positions all the time. And there's no denying that it is going to be very difficult for either player to really say whether or not they are significantly better. Now, tournament-wise, there is no denying that Stats has been more successful recently. But, you know, obviously, this is going to be Protoss versus Protoss. I'm curious to see what kind of builds they decide to go for. And judging by the production tab so far, absolutely dead even up to this point. Now, Stats is currently looking around if you can see that second pylon here. It's very critical that you count your opponent's pylons. And for the very first time in this matchup right now, we do see a little bit of a build order deviation. So Stats opening up with a much quicker Stargate. Uh, he decided to go for the uh, double Adepts here. And then also, of course, the Warp Gate upgrade, whereas on the other side of the map, we uh, we do see the warp gate upgrade here as well. However, first off, double stalkers decided to get produced there, and Zest is going to be able to get his own Stargate out here, but just a little while later. It's really interesting, though. I personally, um, whenever I do play random over at the live stream, I usually do struggle quite a bit in PvP, just because of the fact that if your opponent, for example, hides like a Stargate on the map really early on, or a robotic facility, and you're opening up with something that's a little bit too passive, oftentimes you can accidentally end up losing the game. And on top of that, you really need to uh, differentiate your builds depending on the map that you're playing on. Now, Zest will be able to finally find his opponents to adapt right now as well. Stats is going to be able to uh, shade those forward immediately, but Zest will shut down the front door right now while producing two additional Stalkers. Indeed, that shield battery will be a full wall off. Now, the very first Oracle already coming up here for stats. This is completely unscouted, as, of course, Zest did not go for any kind of scouting in the earlier stages of the game. That pile on the low ground, of course, very nice to pick off at this point, but it's also going to provide a lot of vision for the opponent here, too. Shield battery now cancelled, now that the two adepts once again have been warded off. Uh, the Oracle is going to fly across the map, but it will shortly... Well, at the very least, I'm assuming it would shortly get in range right here of this Oracle, or of this Phoenix as well. The Phoenix is indeed going to turn back around here, and this actually now becomes a little bit awkward, because the Oracle will have a little bit of time here to potentially deal some damage inside of that main base. A couple of probes already going down here very, very quickly. They will get picked off. However, the Oracle, of course, cannot fight against the Phoenix is very efficiently whatsoever. The two adapts likely will be picked up here as well. There we go. Second one now also picked up very easily. And Zest. I mean, he's in a sword position here. He ended up losing a couple of workers, but he did get a lot of those units for his troubles as well. And it does look like he wants to capitalize on this advantage by going for a Nexus here on the low ground. Stats though, not all too worried about it. He's now going to follow this up with a Twilight Council, and he will be going for that low ground Nexus right at this point here as well. 
Units are still roaming around. Zest actually now finding a bit of an angle to go into that main base of his opponent. Potentially deal some damage there as well. Now that the third Phoenix has indeed arrived. He will be able to pick up at the very least a couple of the probe kills while the Stalkers are trying to make their way back inside of the main base here as well. One defending uh, Phoenix though, trying to get a bit of an angle as well. But both players really trying to build up that economy. Now at this point though, Zest is caught in the top left hand corner of the map. If you continue microing here, you can indeed make it so that the Stalkers are not capable of hitting. I think he plans on mass recalling those. Uh, how much energy does he have? He doesn't have enough energy just yet, so he's gonna have to right click here continuously. This one Phoenix trying to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of a pot shot off on these opposing units, but there we go. Eventually, I think one of them will end up dying there, but the Phoenixes will be recalled back at home. Alright, so Stargate openers here initially from both players. However, Stats now going for that very quick Blink Stalker follow-up. Whereas on the other side of the map, we see Zest going for the Robotics Facility instead. And remember what I said earlier, right? Robotics Facility units, of course, very, very good at gunning down Stalkers in particular. However, Blink is going to be quite a bit faster. The Immortal won't be out for another little while. And obviously, the one thing that you do have if you are going for the very quick Blink Stalker upgrade is mobility. You can deal an awful lot. Lot of damage with that. So while both players decided to go for the Stargate, we very quickly now do see those transitions towards other units as indeed those Stalker counts are being built up. A couple of the shield batteries right now going up here near the front base of Zest. Indicating to me at the very least that he does plan on playing a little more defensively. Worker-wise though, players are pretty much dead even and they're really more or less just testing the waters here in this very first game. Playing very normal, uh, you know, standard build orders for this matchup. Zest apparently uh, not standing on his high ground so he won't be able to force field away at, for example, these Stalkers. Blink will be finishing up though in just a little bit, but the Immortal is already out right now too. Uh, one thing though to keep in mind is that they can still blink up into that main base rather easily here as well. Immortal, getting a couple of pot shots off there, but the micro of stats a little bit too good. You can see that neither player is really taking any critical losses here whatsoever. This does, uh, though, uh, favor Zest here just a little bit. Nice little bit of blink micro once again here by our player in red. But there's no denying, right, that Zest is now in a pretty good spot. Now, an interesting switcher, actually. Stats has decided that even though he was behind in the Phoenix count earlier, he's now once again going to transition back to what more and more of these flying Phoenix. And the interesting part about it is that if you use them correctly, right, you can still go ahead and, for example, lift up the opposing immortals, take them out of the equation, and really overwhelm your opponent just with sheer amounts of units and this is kind of similar to for example uh, you know what we used to see back in Brute War with uh, with uh, Corsairs and, and then a bunch of Dark Templar Corsair Zealot it's kind of an interesting uh, principle because if you can take this out of the equation actually Zest just barely not scouting that but if you can take the Immortals out of the equation it becomes a very difficult matchup to win it does look like Stats actually maybe going for yeah, I think he's gonna go for the high ground blink here. At the very least, he will be able to pick up that very first pylon there in the main base. Phoenixes don't want to go in just yet. They're a little bit worried about this. Blink will go off cooldown. A little bit of miss micro there, though, by stats, as he does end up losing a couple of his units. Still, Zest has a lot of units left over, and even though uh, he does have to be careful for the amount of Phoenixes that are out right now, he will be finishing up his own blink upgrade in just a second, and I do think that Zest is still in a phenomenal position. He might even be taking a third base here in just a little bit. Stats, though, doesn't want to go for anything along those lines. The Nexus actually now does get built, but, or at the very least, it, uh, it wasn't just about to be built, but it will get cancelled here by uh, our red Protoss player. Once again, a couple of Phoenixes engaging against a couple of opposing Phoenixes as well. Trying to get the War Prism there too is Stats, but he realizes that Zest's army is growing at a much quicker rate, and he realizes that even though he did put down a couple of gateways, he will not be able to obtain the victory here if he continues trading the way that he is. Alrighty, so here we are in game number two of this best of three series, and indeed we are on Acid Plant LE. Now I just actually quickly looked it up. How successful exactly have both of these players been? Well, I didn't realize it, but Zest has actually won three GSL Code S's. He's won two Home Story Cups, an Intel Extreme Masters, as well as a Kespa Cup. And in case you're unfamiliar, the majority of those tournaments indeed will feature a ton of the top of the line professionals, in particular uh, the GSL Code S. 
Yes, I didn't quite realize that he had won three of them, if I'm not mistaken, but he is an absolute monster. He's been around for years and years, and he's currently actually still uh, part of the GSL Season 2 of 2018 as well. Now, so is his opponent. Stats definitely not a weak opponent either. I mean, uh, Stats actually ended up winning the GSL Super Tournament just really a couple of weeks ago. He's currently also still part of the GSL Code S, also of Season 2, of course, of 2018. He's won an SSL, he's won a GSL Code S, as well as the WCS Korea. So long story short, both of these players are very, very successful in their own rights as well. Curious to see if we're going to see any kind of build order deviation here in game number two. Neither player, though, sending out any kind of very quick probe scouts here. No proxies going down just yet, although I'm not seeing uh, the second pylons here for either player yet. So we'll have to see if maybe they're going to be getting that one inside of their main base or maybe their proxy, uh, you know, their proxy plans will soon be revealed. But there we did see a bit of a, a bit of a probe scout kiss there, right? But we'll have to see if they decide to put up a pylon on this side of the map. But no, neither player really going for anything. Thing, you know, anything unorthodox whatsoever. I kind of love this, though. Look at the build, like, positioning here as well, right? Both players pretty much playing mirrored builds here and really positioning their, uh, their structures in very, very similar ways. I mean, this is pretty much identical. It's kind of crazy. Like, also the probe kiss there in the middle of the map. That was the most romantic moment I've ever seen in a professional game of PvP. Right, they really, uh, well, it was a very quick kiss. It was more like a, a peck in the cheek, I suppose, but it doesn't really matter all too much. Stalker's now going down here, although Stats decides to mix it up, may very well uh, go for something a little bit more defensive, as he does go for that very quick, um, very quick sentry this time around. Now, the probe is still hanging out. This is a reason why you want to keep that probe around, just to see if your opponent is going for anything weird whatsoever. Look at even the pylon positioning here on the natural. That's kind of crazy, right? It's pretty much 100% identical. Stats, though, saved up a lot more resources than his opponent. No additional stalker follow-ups here for our player in red, whereas Zest uh, is indeed still getting himself some additional stalkers out as well. He's now following it up with an additional gateway. No nexus on the low ground just yet, so it may very well be the case that Zest is going to ramp up his production in this game and potentially try to take out his opponent in the earlier stages of of this match. Third gateway, of course, will finish up in just a little bit. There are more and more stalkers now coming up. Uh, Cybernetics Core was chrono boosting out Warp Gates just a little while ago, where Stets is still having a couple of his spell casters now getting uh, the shield battery as well. I think the only is that the only structure in the game that's got uh, that's uh, that's got uh, technically speaking a spell as well. I'm pretty sure, although maybe the Ghost Academy would technically consider to be, you know, a spell-carrying uh, structure as well. But regardless, uh, we do see a very defensive posture here for stats. Now, going for the robotic facility upon, uh, facility upon realizing that there were indeed a lot of stalkers now moving across the map, he will be able to figure out now that they're already at the front door. And now, upon seeing that pylon, I think he's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Second shield battery now coming up. Of course, once the Immortal is out, he's going to be in a phenomenal position. Shield battery he's now finishing up though he's trying to see if he can maybe go for some uh, sentries with their force fields of course behind his army but here we go more and more units will be warped in here as well curious to see if maybe he's going to try and shade up the ramp there's already a probe waiting there though to uh, try and uh, and complete that wall off immortal is going to come out in just a second though and i feel like yeah this is absolutely phenomenal so far by our player in red he will be able to deal with quite a bunch of damage but now with the immortal finishing up in just a little bit and he's Shield battery still helping out. I think that Stats is going to have a very easy time holding against this aggression. There we go. There's no blink on any of those units. Perfect force field right there as well. Really shutting out part of that stalker army. And Zest is going to be forced to retreat with, I guess, his stalkers. You know, with their tails between their legs. I don't know if that's the thing. I don't think they have tails. I don't even really want to know. But there's no denying that Zest economy is quite a bit weaker here than that of Stats. Apparently, he's figured out a way to combat that. He's gonna once again send the Stalkers, though, inside of that natural mineral line. That will be able to pick up a couple more worker kills. A single Adept now moving across the left-hand side of the map, too. Mass Recall will be forced here on those Stalkers. They will be able to get out of there. But I think that Zest, indeed, is gonna try and go for something that his opponent wanted to do in the previous game. And follow it up with that double Phoenix production. Now, Phoenix is, of course, if you can lift up the Immortals, you can really deal an awful lot of damage. But it is very critical that you micro it correctly. I wonder if Stats is even gonna try and uh, 
move across the map, though. Yeah, it does look like that is going to be the case. Although, right now, Zest immediately is going for the Void Ray. Very interesting. This is something that we've seen a little bit more as of late at this level of play. Void Rays for a while, not very common to get whatsoever. And I guess back in Wings of Liberty, they were pretty much the only Stargate unit you would ever get. But the Void Ray is going to be very, very valuable. And he's actually going to be starting up a second one right at this point as well. Stats does not have a Twilight Council just yet. So that does mean that he's mostly going to be focused on, uh, on a bunch of Stalkers here that will not have their Blink ability yet at this point. Still though, Zest is going to be going into a defensive posture here. And I really feel like Phoenix's may have been a better option. Great force fields though, but to pick up Micro here by Stats. Very, very solid as well. Getting a lot of value out of that War Prism. And that's the thing, right? Zest is going to have a hard time really getting the value here with that single one of those Void Rays. Once again though, the pick up Micro is very, very solid. There's a lot of shield batteries here. Trying to replenish their energy here as well. The longer that this goes on, the more it should go technically in favor here of Zest. Once more more of those Stargate units do come out. Obviously, uh, the amount of Stalkers, though, is going up right now as well. But here we go. Once again, nice little bit of pickup micro here on that single War Prism. Really trying to get the value there out of that pickup radius. Incredible work so far here by Stats. He really wants to close this game right here, right now. Still picking up more and more units. He's going to follow it up with another War Print. Obviously, the uh, Void Ray can't really go around to try and swoop up that structure or that unit here as well. The Immortal once again focus firing down the pylons and beautifully done there. Stats will be able to, uh, to obtain the victory here in game number two. And I think that that previous game perfectly shows why it's not always the smartest idea to try and, uh, and copy your strategies from professional gamers. I mean... If you're gonna be able to copy that micro at the same time as well that Stats showed us, you're gonna be in a great spot, but just simply copying his build and trying to, uh, you know, trying to play along with him is extremely difficult because the man is so quick there. That pickup micro was really solid. I didn't even notice that he was spending so much time target firing down the pylons there as well. I guess once the Immortals did their jobs of killing the Stalkers, he decided that it was time to, uh, to focus fire down uh, some of those structures that were powering the shield bed as well but there's no denying that uh, that it's uh, a, a pretty uh, a pretty difficult thing to copy right the only thing that you can really do to try and get better at that is just play the game a heck of a lot now I kind of feel like uh, this is kind of an interesting uh, an interesting point of discussion I've seen a couple of people mention this a few times already I feel like all of the matchups in StarCraft 2 gotten way better since uh, Blizzard decided to uh, remove the Mothership Core, right? Some of you will probably remember the Mothership Core, one of those structures, right? Or one of these uh, units, rather, right, that you could really use uh, to shoo away your opposing uh, threats as well. I kind of feel that Protoss versus Protoss was actually better with the Mothership around, because you could really, uh, with the Mothership Core around, that is, because you could really go ahead and uh, play a little bit more greedy and a little bit more economic focus whereas these days you really have to be 100% on top of your micro to not mess it up along the way I'm kind of curious to uh, to hear your thoughts on this as well I really do like the fact though like don't get me wrong I'm very happy that they decided to remove the mothership core um, you know out of the game just because I don't think it was very good at all for uh, PVT and PVZ but there's no denying that in Protoss versus Protoss, it did have some very interesting implications. Because oftentimes you would players see, uh, you would see players go for a much uh, quicker third base. Sometimes you would see players play just simply a little bit more greedy, economically speaking. And these days, there's a lot more one basing and two basing, just because holding on when you've made a slight error is very very difficult. I mean, essentially, when you uh, when you try to get a, a when, you, when you get a small advantage in PvP at this level of play. Your opponent will capitalize on it very quickly, and the comeback is very difficult to do. I mean, Zest right there, he realized that he was behind, and he decided to go for that double Stargate. Uh, that was really his only option, whereas if he would have had Photon Overcharge, obviously the game would have been able to go for a little longer, and Stats would have been forced to try and transition towards the third base. It's an interesting uh, discussion uh, to, to have, but let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section of this video. Now, Zesto apparently is going to be opening up this game, which will indeed be the final match of this series with that Stargate once again. Now, he decided to go for uh, the double adapt here. The adapt's actually very critical here. 
because uh, indeed the probe that was scouting for stats decided to plant down that pylon right where the nexus was supposed to be. Stargate finishing up right now, whereas on the other side of the map we see stats are going for the expansion here too, but now already transitioning towards the Twilight Council and Chrono boosting out Blink. How many Stalkers are there right now for our Protoss player in red? Looks like there are four at this point. He does need to be careful though. Obviously, look at this setup, right? He's trying to control the low ground here. Trying to make sure that he can position his units in a smart way. But he does need to run now. Uh, that he knows the timing of this, uh, this Oracle arriving on the other side of the map. Usually, Oracles will arrive roughly four minutes or so into the game. If they are not proxied, obviously if they are proxied, you would expect them a little bit sooner. And that does mean that these Stalkers are going to try and make their way towards the Mineral Line right now. Only two gateways up to this point though, so not that many. But Stalkers will have Blink in just about, I would say, a half minute or so from now if he decides to continue Chrono boosting it. And here we go. Zest is indeed going to be able to fly in here with the Oracle. He's now checking if there are any hidden Stalkers. Stalkers now do show themselves. He decides to zap away at one of those probes. But I don't think there's really going to be that much more that he will be able to do. And this is where this is where the matchup already becomes a little bit more interesting, right? So, Stats, I mean, he's got a very solid tech route here already. This would have been very risky if Zest decided to open up with, for example, a robotics facility instead. But just the scouting information that he got in the earlier part of the game apparently told him enough when he saw the double uh, Stalkers coming out that it was time for him uh, to uh, take a bit of a risk and transition towards that Twilight Council. But there's no denying that, you know, obviously even if you do see the double Stalker, it's very interesting, very difficult. And actually it does get scouted and sniped there too. Uh, but it's still very difficult to make that call and pretty risky from time to time as well. So far though, neither player is significantly ahead, although Zest does have a nice worker lead here. Even though he has been shut down as far as his Oracle harassment goes, he does have a very solid amount of uh, he does have a very solid amount of workers here, which actually does make this a much more macro-oriented game already. Both players now deciding to transition to watch these forges. Which obviously does mean they're looking to get some uh, some Protoss weapon upgrades here too. Blink Stalkers now though arrived on the other side of the map. Now luckily for Zest, there is this ramp and of course the Immortal is going to be absolutely critical here. In particular with the shield battery in the back. I don't think there's really a whole lot that Stats could try and do. Now the uh, Observer is of course flying across the map. He could decide to go for a Blink up on the high ground. There's not that many units here for our player in blue, but neither is there a whole lot here for stats at this point. He is now obviously transitioning towards uh, more and more higher tier units here as well. And it does look like the Stalkers decide that they want to try and test the waters just a little bit. They get one already here for their troubles. The Immortal now though also going to town. He will be able to probably pick up a couple of worker kills here as well. But the Immortal eventually will be able to clean this one up. Still it takes four shots here of a Stalker to shut these units down. At the very least once they do uh, have some uh, upgrades on them they're going to be in a much stronger position. I actually think having this next one here inside of the main would have been super nice as well. Now eventually though the rest of the units there for uh, Zest will be able to close the distance by walking from the natural over to where those units were still hanging out and he will be able to deflect that force but I kind of feel like that engagement there did go in favor of our player in blue. Twilight Council are finally coming up as well as like a gateway explosion here for Zest does look like he plans on sitting on two bases here for a little while longer. And in the meantime, on the other side of the map, I mean, you can see how evenly matched these two players are, right? In the meantime, on the other side of the map, we see uh, stats doing practically the exact same thing. Now, one Oracle here. Apparently, he did get uh, three worker kills here in total as well. But he will be able to, uh, you know, once again, use Revelation there. Immortals. Do get one of their Stalker kills there for their troubles as well. But Zest, even though he made a whole bunch of gateways, he does not plan on going all in. And this is just going to be for production's sake instead. So it looks like we're going to be arriving at the Immortal Archon stage here for really both of these players. With charge being researched right now and the Templar Archives coming up here for Zest, he's going to be in a phenomenal position to really start playing that Archon Zealot Immortal based style and stats. I mean, practically mirroring, like look at that timing here of the third basis. Seriously, right? Like they roughly know what time they're supposed to take it at, but this is pretty much dead even. So I'm actually going to switch here by clicking on this next Nexus. Like this, this one from stats is about, I would say a half second faster. But that's about it. That's about it. These players are so very evenly matched. I mean, seven, eight minutes into the game, the, the, the production tab is still almost even. 
it's so insane, like how in sync these uh, these top of the line guys are. I mean, even the warp prism production right now, probably uh, probably the positioning there of the uh, of the observers too. Okay, not quite, not quite. The observer uh, the observers are in a bit of a different spot, but there's no denying that uh, both players definitely know exactly what it is that they need at this point in the game. Even though they decided to take different routes of getting towards the third base, uh, they're now going for pretty much a, a dead even economy. They're going for a pretty much dead even army composition here and for a very, very similar setup overall. Oracle trying to see if it can zap away at a couple of those units. Looks like it will indeed be able to do so. Uh, the uh, two High Templar are apparently trying to go for the feedback on the Oracle, but apparently they are... Uh, they're probably going to be meant to... Uh, well, maybe be put in a Warp Prism, but probably also to become an Oracle. There we go. Alright, now let's see. Who's going to attack first? It looks like Stats may very well be making himself up for an engagement. He's just about to finish up his plus two weapon upgrades, but so is Zest. Zest literally just, you know, nicking at his heels right here. Look at that, right? Immediately going now for the shield upgrade too. Not slowing down as far as upgrades go, but I mean, look at this. This is so very even. Now, Protoss versus Protoss, it is one of those matchups that can be open, like, it can be over in a heartbeat. One mistake and this game can end. It's either force fields and the Archons being out of position or an army being caught off guard and then a warp main or warp in in the main base. Uh, you know, it's it's all about positioning here and making sure that you do not take any, uh, you know, any massive mistakes. Stats does look like, though, he wants to go for that engagement. He's got that third base fully saturated. He's going for a bunch of additional gates, but at the same time, right when he realizes, hey, wait a second, the War Prism is in the main, he is going to be sending all of his army back home once again. And while a few workers were killed in this game here and there, it's nothing all too crazy just yet. So there we go. <clears throat> that's the story as of, uh, or, or that's the story of how Zest managed to deflect that army. He's now going to continue warping in more and more Zealots, as well as just simply two High Templar. But one, uh, one Warp Prism in the main base was indeed enough. Um, I'm curious to see how both players will, uh, will proceed from here. I mean, they're both pretty much building up identical armies. It will all come down to one major clash. Now, Zest does still have that War Prism in the back. This time around, a couple of Stalkers were left behind here as well, but both players look as if they want to try and take this fight to the next level. A couple of these army units actually now being recalled into the natural here as well. That does mean that Zest is trying to set up a massive concave. He will be able to split up this army here as well. Part of Stats' army right now also moving up towards this high ground. But here we go. This is going to be an extremely difficult engagement to call. The War Prism has now arrived from the other side of the map as well. It's going to try and warp in some units here for our player in red. It does look as if those Stats just simply has a little bit more than his opponent. He's going to be able to power through a lot of those very extreme expensive units. The micro from stats, once again, absolutely phenomenal, as he does manage to do a heck of a lot of damage. Zest, though, obviously does still have a very solid amount of production here as well, but with those uh, reinforcements being warped in, in the middle of the engagement, stats, indeed, will be the one who obtains the victory. Beautiful micro here. Honestly, without the value that that warp prism provided, I'm pretty sure that stats would have been in a much, much worse position. Now, I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, all right? And I will see you in the next one.